Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be answering the question, why would you use a square bracket? It's a pair of punctuation marks without the curved edge that we associate with a more traditional bracket and it's that's why it's called a square bracket really. We use a square bracket to show additional information that explains the text it follows. For example, it square bracket, the internet, is really just a forum for communication in the 21st century. So as you can see here, I'm clarifying what it means through the use of a square bracket. So it's for clarification, to explain what exactly the subject of the sentence is, because it's not precise enough to say it. Another function of a square bracket is to modify the actual meaning of the text to make it clearer for the reader to follow. For example, most students congratulate themselves and leave, square brackets, their teachers to thank themselves. So in the original text, if I had used that, the sentence would have read, most students congratulate themselves and leave them to thank themselves, which makes no sense really. What we want is the absolute clarity of exactly who you're thinking about. So in this instance, by using square brackets, I'm modifying what the original text had in it and I'm making it clearer to you what I mean. Another way we can use a square bracket is by including within the square bracket ellipsis. That's three dot dot dots within square brackets. And the ellipsis is used in square brackets to show that some words are missing in the text. Normally from a quote of someone famous, for example, here though, I'm just quoting what somebody else has said about Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse is the only jazz musician, square brackets with ellipsis, who won six awards in 2008. What's important to note is that statement was a lot longer in the original text it came from. And so the square brackets with the ellipsis, without them, I'm saying the huge amount of words that originally went into the original statement. So here, when I'm using ellipsis and dot, 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 it's a quick nifty way of not having to quote a huge number of words. What's important to note though, is that statement makes sense when I include the square brackets and the ellipsis. And if I take the ellipsis and the square brackets away, it's still clear to you exactly what is meant. Finally, this is a strange one, but one I think is worthy of note. When it says SIC in square brackets, that is used to indicate something quite hilarious, really, that a grammar error has been made by the original writer or speaker. In a lot of very highbrow pieces of literature or in newspapers, they often use SIC in brackets that are square to indicate that what they're commenting on, they know has a mistake in it. You don't need to tell them there's a grammatical error, they already know. I'll illustrate for you in the next slide. The big thing to note already though is that square brackets have numerous functions that are not the same as rounded brackets. And whilst it might seem that a bracket is a bracket, actually that's just not true. Try and memorise this information before you try what's on the next slide. Now it's your turn. For each of the three sentences, consider if the use of square brackets has been used appropriately. And hit pause if you need thinking time. So, how did you get on? The witness wrote, how can this be fair, square brackets SIT, in the 21st century? As you may have already noticed, whoever's reporting what the witness wrote is aware there is a grammatical mistake. In this particular case, a spelling mistake. Because fair, when we're thinking about equality and being treated fairly, is not spelt F-A-R-E. It is instead spelt F-A-I-R. Therefore, Whoever's reporting this is just flagging, they know there's a mistake in what the witness wrote. But because they're reporting it, they can't change it for whoever the witness is. That would be untrue. Next up, 
They, square brackets, parents are full-time nurturers of their offspring. Here, this is also correct. The function of the square brackets here are simply to clarify that the focus in terms of subject of this sentence are the parents. We know who precisely they are when we read what's in the square brackets. Otherwise, it could be quite confusing for us as readers. Finally, a very sophisticated use of square brackets is when we're simplifying through the use of ellipsis within the square brackets, a much more convoluted and wordy quote slimmed down into fewer words. Here, this is a quote taken from Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And Victor is extolling how he wants to create a new species that will value him. He says, a new species would bless me, owing their being to me. Except, of course, that's all I've chosen to comment on. As you can see beneath, I've explained what was missing when I've taken out of the ellipsis in the square brackets. Now, in reality, if I was doing a piece of analytical writing, this is absolutely correct as it is. I wouldn't need to tell you what information I've taken away. To me, the square bracket is an incredibly powerful tool. If nothing else, it outlines for you and clarifies more precisely than a rounded bracket and often explains a little bit more detail of what you're sharing in your writing or what you're reading. I like the functions of the square bracket that involve ellipsis. It helps slim down your analytical writing and helps you evaluate your style. With what's in square brackets, involving SIC, it's a great way of flagging you know that whoever you're using as a writer or resource has made a mistake to whoever is reading is a good way of showing that you know your stuff. But more than anything, the square bracket is extremely precise in the information it shares with us. Don't hold back from using the square bracket. It's an extremely sophisticated use of punctuation that very few people know how to use. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?